Can we bring up the photo of the orbit so that Constantine can explain this to us a little bit? Mm, and, perfect. Yes. Yeah, so tell us what we're looking at here. So here in magenta or, or purple, um, what you see are the six, the most distant orbits that we know of in, in the so-called Kuiper Belt. Kuiper Belt is a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, and Pluto, a former planet, is actually a member of the Kuiper Belt. So if we were not looking at the most distant orbits, if we were just looking at sort of garden variety orbits within, within the Kuiper Belt, they would not all swing out into the same overall direction. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we would see is sort of a flower pattern where every um, orbit would, would face every which way. Mm -hmm. It would be randomized. Okay? And uh, that's not true for these most distant orbits. This is peculiar because if you leave them alone and you know, imagine that the solar system only has the eight planets that we know of and come back in 100 million years, they would have all randomized. So this, this alignment not only needs to be um, not only is it kind of different from the rest of the Kuiper belt, it needs to be continually maintained by gravitational influence of, of some body. I understand. And the orange or the yellowish, that's planet nine. So this large planet that you propose has affected the smaller bodies and keeps them in the strange orbits that they're in. Yeah, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite you know, strange perhaps that the two orbits are anti-aligned, right? Planet nine swings out into the other di overall direction yes. compared to uh, the, the small bodies. But I get it, it's like a magnet, it's pulling them inwards towards it? Uh, yeah, yeah, as it turns out, the physics here is not too different from the physics of how, um, how a parent keeps, keeps a child swinging on a swing, right? So if you want to kind of maintain a, f a certain angle, uh, with which you know, with which uh, a child swings, then you want to push the child you know, mm -hmm. effectively once per or twice per, you know, swing cycle, and then kind of maintain it. the the physics here is is kind of similar, where the okay. the period with which Planet Nine zips around the sun, as it turns out, is an integer multiple, uh, is or is a, rather a rational multiple of periods of all of these. Kuiper Belt objects, so it's it's more complicated than a than a parent you know pushing pushing a child, but it is nevertheless the same uh, picture where the gravitational tugs that Planet Nine exerts on the small body are coherent, right? It's it's like um, it's like a very complicated drum beat. It's like a drum beat with a complex time signature, sure. but nevertheless, you there is some structure to it. Let me see if I can drill down on this a little bit because. This orbit of planet nine, 10,000 years, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay, and these smaller objects, which are in the Kuiper belt, mm -hmm. and you've said that these smaller objects, there's the size of LA, roughly, is that what you said? Yeah, so each individual object, roughly the size of LA, yeah, maybe, maybe LA basin, uh, you know, the biggest, the biggest one is maybe the size of California. Okay, here's a newbie question. Why does Sedna get a name, and the rest of them have these catchy uh, <laughs> dates based uh, names based on dates? <laughs> so uh, Sedna gets a name because Sedna was discovered in 2003. Okay, and it was one of the first big objects. I mean, like you know, of course, Sedna is the is the California sized object okay. uh, among these uh, uh, all of these characters. 2012 VP113 will get a name, I think. Uh, in fact, its nickname is Biden, because VP. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, the the little guys that are that are the size of LA. There's so many of them that it's it you would run out of names.